and I understand perfectly well on an intuitive level that airplanes are big. But this knowledge remains in the form of dry numbers until you're personally standing next to a chassis taller than a human or you're watching a person disappear against the background of a cargo hatch. The largest aircraft we're about to tell you about overrun the usual landmarks, their wingspans cover a football field, and inside the fuselage you can easily turn a truck without turning off its engine. So which ones are they exactly? Let's get acquainted. Was there any chance that the first to enter this list with two legs, or rather wings, would be any other than the Antonov AN-225 Mariah? After all, if there's any standard for gigantism, then it'd definitely be the AN-225. In the mid-1980s, the USSR needed a transport aircraft capable of carrying the maximum possible payload, fulfilling a role similar to the American shuttle carrier aircraft. But of course, it was not the shuttle that needed to be transported, but rather the boosters of the super-heavy launch vehicle Energia, developed as part of the Buran program, which was a response, or to be completely frank, a brazen copy of the U.S. space shuttle program. And to transport the Buran itself, of course, hence the characteristic twin keel, so that the flow from the load on the back of the aircraft does not disrupt the airflow of the stabilizer. Unlike its predecessor, the AN-124 Ruslan, the AN-225 Mraya was not intended for tactical airlift and was not designed for short field operations. Therefore, the rear cargo doors or ramps were eliminated to save weight. Loading was done via the fold-down nose and the squatted nose landing gear. But the AN-124 was used as the basis for the design, lengthening the fuselage, strengthening the wing, and adding two more engines bringing their total number to six Progress D-18T turbofan engines. Rise numbers sound like an exaggeration, but this is literally how it is. The maximum takeoff weight is 1,410,958 pounds. Still a world record. The wingspan is 290 feet. The length is 275 feet 7 inches, and the height is 59 feet 5 inches. Inside, the cargo deck has a volume of about 46,000 cubic feet, is 142.2 feet long, 21 feet wide, and 14 feet high. It could easily accommodate diesel locomotives, generators weighing nearly 300,000 pounds, and entire wind turbine blades. In theory, Mraya could easily transport the nose section of a Boeing 747, 767, or 777 in an external container and the entire fuselage of a Boeing 737 could fit inside. But in reality, the AN-225 records are a separate genre. There are about 240 of them in total. Among them, the title of being the heaviest aircraft ever built, the largest wingspan of any aircraft in operation, record for total payload lifted into the air, 507,600 pounds, the heaviest single load ever airlifted was a generator for a gas-fired engine in Armenia, complete with cargo frame, weighing 418,830 pounds. The world's longest airlift in the form of two wind turbine test blades, each 138 feet long. And even a day when a single mission brought Mraya more than 100 records at once. Each of its arrivals turned into a city event. Thousands of spectators, traffic jams at the airport, and questions like, how does this thing even fly? It's a pity that the trajectory of the giant's fate turned out to be dramatic. In February of 2022, the only AN-225 built was destroyed at the airfield in Gostomol during the Russian invasion. For the industry, this was a symbolic and practical blow. A unique range of possibilities disappeared. But Ukraine and the manufacturer Antonov publicly declared their intention to restore the Mraya relying on the backlog of the second originally prepared airframe, who deliberately caused damage to not only Ukrainian aviation, but to the global air cargo sector as a whole. So it's quite possible that in five to 10 years and three to five billion dollars later, we'll see a new incarnation of the steel giant. While Myra proved that sometimes the best answer in commercial cargo aviation is to take it all at once, in military aviation, the same principle was actively implemented by the Lockheed C-5M Super Galaxy. It would probably not be an exaggeration to call it the Pentagon's main intercontinental truck. 
It supported U.S. military operations in every major conflict, including Vietnam, Iraq, Yugoslavia, and Afghanistan, as well as allies such as Israel during the Yom Kippur War and operations in the Persian Gulf. The Titan has a maximum takeoff weight of 840,000 pounds, a wingspan of 222 feet 9 inches, a length of 247 feet 1 inch, and a height of 65 feet 1 inch. Interestingly, at the start of its career in the 1970s, NASA considered the C-5 as a shuttle carrier aircraft for transporting its space shuttles to the Kennedy Space Center, but ultimately rejected it in favor of the low-wing Boeing 747, while the USSR, on the contrary, chose the high-wing AN-225 to transport its burn. The engineering feature that makes the Galaxy indispensable for logistics is through-loading as both the nose and aft doors open to the full width and height of the bay. It also has full-height entry ramps on both sides and a landing gear squat system that allows the floor to be lowered to the height of the loading platform so that equipment can enter the aircraft without additional ramps. But while the standard C-5 has been faithfully serving its homeland for over 55 years, the upgrade of the entire fleet of existing C-5B and C-5C to the latest modification, the C-5M Super Galaxy, was completed only in August 2018. The heart of the upgrade is the four F-138 GE-100 engines with 51,250 pounds of thrust, which increases cargo load and range, reduces takeoff distance by 30%, and increases the rate of climb by 38%. Not to mention that the upgrade package makes the aircraft much quieter and also increases the availability and maintainability of the U.S. Super Galaxy fleet. In September of 2009, the C-5M crew set 41 new records, lifting a 176,610-pound payload to an altitude of over 41,100 feet in 23 minutes, 59 seconds. Additionally, 33 timed altitude records were set for various payload classes, and the record for maximum payload was broken at 6,562 feet. But records are just the tip of the iceberg. In its daily work, Super Galaxy takes on what others don't dare to or simply cannot. For example, two M1 Abrams main battle tanks at a time, six Boeing AH-64 Apache attack helicopters, bridge trusses, radars, engines, and all this in drive-on, drive-off configurations, saving days on docking different types of transport. The upgrade not only rejuvenated the aircraft, but also expanded its real mission area for decades to come. The C-5M was, is, and remains a pocket ocean of logistics for peak transfers of units and heavy equipment. If the C-5M operates on the principle of, I'll deliver everything that needs to be delivered, then the Boeing B-52H Stratofortress operates on the motto of, I'll get you anywhere. There are planes that will last a lifetime, and there are machines that will last a lifetime, and the B-52H definitely belongs to the latter. Its first flight took place back in 1952. It's been in service since 1955, and yet the U.S. Air Force has no intention of seriously considering decommissioning it at least until the 2050s. This is a unique case when the Atlant from the last century not only avoided becoming obsolete, but also turned out to be an extremely flexible air platform that happily absorbs all upgrades. Modernize the targeting pods, communications, weapons, and your big ugly fat fella will be ready to carry out the mission of strategic deterrence and global strike. In terms of numbers, the B-52H lags slightly behind the two previous aviation behemoths, but still outperforms the lion's share of aircraft ever built. Powered by eight Pratt & Whitney TF-33 P3103 turbofan engines, producing up to 17,000 pounds of thrust each, the aircraft has a wingspan of 185 feet, is 159 feet 4 inches long, stands 48 feet 8 inches tall, and has a maximum takeoff weight of an impressive 488,000 pounds. But what's even more impressive is its ability to fly up to 8,800 miles without refueling, and if you refuel your buff along the way, its range is limited only by the endurance of the crew. The B-52's giganism is useful not so much for intimidating enemies, although it does that too, but for the flexibility of the aircraft since it carries the widest range of weapons in the U.S. arsenal. From freefall and guided bombs to long-range cruise missiles, including the AGM-86, in a conventional war, the Stratofortress acts as a flying support battery, and over the ocean it covers the tasks of observation and mine leg. 
It's not for nothing that during Operation Desert Storm, it accounted for 40% of all the ordnance dropped by the Allies, the effect of scale multiplied by the range. But the records of this glorious bomber are not always measured in tons of ammunition, sometimes they're measured in kilometers and hours. The B-52H regularly carried out ultra-long-range combat missions, and a particularly telling episode in its career was the episode of Operation Desert Strike in 1996, when a pair of H-Series flew 16,000 miles round-trip from Barksdale in 34 hours, successfully striking infrastructure in Iraq. For its time, it was the longest combat sortie and a clear demonstration of how a strategic air platform evaluates the world map in hours of flight time. The next major step for the B-52H is to be fitted with new Rolls-Royce F-130 engines and transformed into the B-52J modification by 2030. Of course, there may be those who will challenge the Stratofortress title as the best bomber in terms of wing area or weight, specifying that there are larger aircraft. However, there will be no one among them who will be able to deny the coolness of the B-52 in terms of the main criterion, the combination of range, weapons range, airfield availability, and the ability to survive entire eras. The USSR decided to respond to the pragmatism and resources of US bombers with loudness, speed, and demonstrativeness, betting on overtaking the enemy in numbers and rolling out the heavy strategic bomber Tupolev Tu-160 Beli Lebed in the late 1980s. Incidentally, it also became the last aircraft in its class developed for the Soviet Air Force. The aircraft became the quintessential Soviet response to the American B-1 program, variable sweep wings, four monstrously powerful engines, and a supersonic burst of speed. Unlike the Rockwell B-1B Lancer, which sacrificed speed for stealth, the Tu-160 decided to retain variable air intakes and a speed ceiling of up to Mach 2 Plus. It has a maximum takeoff weight of 606,271 pounds, a wingspan of 182 feet 9 inches, a length of 177 feet 6 inches, and a height of 43 feet. So the giant part is quite appropriate. The engines here are four NK32 turbofans with afterburner thrust of 55,000 pounds force each. For armament, two internal bays for rotating installations with a base load of up to 12 KH-55, KH-55SM family cruise missiles. Although it was first unveiled to the public in 1989, the following year the aircraft set a total of 44 world speed records in its weight class including a 621.37-mile flight at 1,081.43 miles per hour with a payload of 66,138 pounds. And in 2020, according to Russian media, two long-range aviation crews set a record, spending more than 25 hours in the air and covering a distance of over 12,427 miles, which, however, still does not reach the figures of even the old B-52, which was born more than 30 years before the Tu-160. For all its showiness, one thing you can't take away from the Beli Lebed is that to this day it remains the largest and heaviest supersonic military aircraft ever built. However, despite all its strengths in the form of huge internal volume, powerful engines, and a window for improvement of the missile component, its dependence on long airfields and infrastructure, as well as the emphasis on standoff weapons instead of platform stealth, makes the Tu-160 pale in comparison to its foreign counterparts. However, some people like supercars that turn themselves and their owner into one whole piece at the slightest collision, and not the ugly but reliable Volvo 240 tank. Having mentioned bombers, it's time to recall those aircraft that make long-range dashes possible for the former. We are, of course, talking about the invisible heroes of strategic aviation, the McDonnell Douglas KC-10 Extender Tankers. The KC-10 is a rare dual-job aircraft being called both a flying gas station and an honest-to-goodness truck. Based on the civilian DC-1030CF, a wide-body trijet with enormous fuel capacity and useful area, the extender became a true multi-tool in the hands of the United States for the transfer of its forces over global distances. It was originally intended to act as a bridge between the flying boom and hose and drogue worlds, supporting both the Air Force's heavy bombers and the U.S. Navy's carrier-based aircraft in a single sortie. The KC-10's dimensions, with three GE F-103 engines producing 52,500 pounds of thrust each, are impressive even compared to the giants we've mentioned before. 
The tanker's maximum takeoff weight is 590,000 pounds. Its wingspan is 165 feet, 5 inches. Its length is 181 feet, 7 inches, and its height is 58 feet, 1 inch. Fully loaded, the Extender's six tanks hold over 365,000 pounds of fuel, nearly twice the capacity of the legendary KC-135 Stratotanker. It can carry up to 170,000 pounds of cargo and 75 passengers, and has a range of about 4,400 miles with the payload and up to 11,500 miles empty. For loading, it has a huge side door, roller tables and winches, as well as 27 pallet spaces. In the medical configuration, the entire aircraft turns into a full-fledged aeromedical evacuation center. And while the KC-10 may be slower than other aircraft in terms of its own speed, it more than makes up for it in the speed at which it can transfer fuel to friendly aircraft, up to 1,100 gallons per minute via boom and up to 4,700 gallons per minute via hose. The latest batches of aircraft also received wing capsules for refueling two aircraft with a cone at the same time, so now the KC-10 can be called a flying refueling farm. During operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, KC-10 and KC-135 tankers conducted tens of thousands of contacts, transferring a combined total of over 125 million gallons of fuel without ever missing a scheduled rendezvous, causing the first echelons of airlift to move in a virtually continuous stream. Since 2001, Extender has become a regular participant in Operation Noble Eagle, flying more than 350 sorties to protect the U.S. skies, and during Operations Enduring Freedom and Iraqi Freedom, tankers flew nearly 1,400 sorties. And yet, even standards have a finishing point. In 2024, the U.S. Air Force officially said goodbye to the last of the KC-10s, and its role gradually passed to the KC-46A. However, the logic of using the tanker as a range multiplier has not gone away. Instead, the toolkit has simply been updated. So we've talked about great aircraft, each with its own logic of size. In some cases, it's the payload that matters, in others, the ability to replace a dozen flights with one, and in others, the ability to make sure that any of your aircraft ends up at the right point on Earth with a full tank. Now it's your turn to tell us which of the monster planes you like the most and why. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.